This small, happy Florida home is filled with love and laughter. Oh, my goodness. Thank you so much. It was just a loving, a loving neighborhood. But sometimes, pretty things are rotten on the inside. It was someone that they trusted, that they let come into their home. And when you let a stranger into your home, evil may not be far behind. They were completely taken advantage of in the worst, you know, horrible way that a person can imagine. That sweet smile with the evil behind it. It's a day like any other in Tampa, Florida, when Don Mallory rises at dawn and slips outside for a cigarette. He's careful not to wake his wife, Jana, or their elderly neighbor, Peggy Merman, who's staying with them. As a matter of routine, Don checks in on Peggy. Peggy, Jana, you guys up? Jenny in here? Hello oh, there, cowboy. Why are you so jumpy? Peggy up yet? I don't know. Peggy? to check on her. He noticed that she was cold and stiff. Donald called uh, 911 and a uh, medical crew uh, was sent. The paramedics try to bring Peggy back from the brink, but there's little they can do. There was an initial pronouncement of death by the uh, fire rescue. Jana breaks the news to Peggy's family. Got it. Hello. Janice, it's Jana. Hi. What's going on? Honey, I'm... I'm sorry, but your mother's passed away. I, I was stunned. I, at first, I was, I was in shock. You know, I, I didn't believe what I had just heard. And I fell to my knees. I felt like somebody had hit me in the stomach with a sledgehammer. She's dead. She's dead. If it's an unattended death, which is basically out of the hospital or out of hospice, we get involved. That's why we're there. It's, it's kind of a, I hate to use routine call, but it's routine for us. Officer Perkins um, arrives there. His role is to see whether or not there are any signs of foul play, whether or not there's any sort of suspicious activity. I, I was shaking her and there was nothing. She was fine yesterday. I can't believe she's gone. I'd like to check the room if that's okay. Yeah, of course. He did not note anything that was out of the ordinary. You know, no signs of a struggle, uh, no signs of uh, injury to Peggy. She had significant health issues. She was old. She had a heart condition. She also had um, issues with her kidneys. I believe she had diabetes. And it looked like more of a common circumstance we run into in Florida where people pass away. It's a tragic day in this small community in South Tampa. Her neighborhood was a South Tampa neighborhood. Um, a lot of close-knit people. She would lived there quite a few years. Everybody knew everybody. It's a community. It's not just a bunch of houses stuck there. A community where neighbors help each other out. Take Peggy, for example. She's been living with Donald and Jana Mallory for the last few months. She had degenerative bone disease. She couldn't care for herself. She couldn't bathe herself. She couldn't feed herself. It appears as though she went in her sleep. I guess that's a blessing. I'm sorry to bother you with this any further, ma'am, but 
There's still a few details I'd like to get about the state of Mrs. Merman's health. While she was on a lot of medication for pain, she had a hard time walking, some kind of bone disease. So I, I would make her a protein shake every day. When people think that there's a natural cause of death, then the cops talk it over with the county medical examiner's office, and they can choose to further examine the case or turn the body over to a funeral home, in which case the medical examiner never gets involved, uh, police never do a crime scene investigation. No, it looks like she just passed. Probably don't need to send the examiner out. As men from a local funeral home arrive to claim Peggy's body, Janice and Jana speak again. Hello? Hi, uh, it's Janice. I, I just wanted to know if you could go in and get her rings, especially the Marquise one. My husband, who's a fire chief for, you know, like 30-something years, and they always tell the firemen, leave the jewelry, you know, with the family, because it's much better. Mrs. Merman, her mom, always wore wedding rings. That was something valuable and precious to her mother. I'm sorry, Janice, I can't. I, I can't see her like that. Oh, Jana, I, I understand that, but, um, uh, look, that Marquis ring. It was her wedding ring. Um, hold on, I'll, I'll see if John can go in. Janice, um, the rings are gone. What do you mean they're gone? I had told her over the telephone, find them. And I told my husband, and he said, well, come on, we'll go down, you know. Janice prepares to make one last sad trip to her mother's house, an hour away. It's a place her mother loved, and where she spent the last 17 years of her life. Peggy was a neighborhood icon well known for her lively sense of humor and her style. My mother was a character. She truly was. Uh, she had a great sense of humor. Well, I think she was uh, um, a outgoing person. She was uh, very funny. You know, when I first moved over there, she made me welcome into the neighborhood. She knew everyone in the area through the convenience store she ran with her second husband, Don. How's it started? Do we make millions? <laughs> if we did, I wouldn't tell you. <laughs> They've been together a, about 15 years. Her neighbors would often visit the loving couple. Okay. Now, Jackie, I know I owe you something. So how much did this cost? You don't owe me nothing. The only thing I want is this ring on your finger. Oh, no, it's from my cold dead fingers. It's going to my grandchild. I told you that before. I'm not going to take it. Don't you worry. When Peggy undergoes a minor heart procedure, it's clear the elderly couple needs help. But there are some options she won't consider. Oh, I'm so sorry. You can't stay with us, Mom. Oh, sweetheart. That's an impossible situation in your condition. It's all right. The reason that she didn't live with me is um, I have um, Parkinson's. And I have a weight restriction to what I can actually lift and what I'm supposed to do. And I suffer migraines. That made it impossible for her to be with us because she did require the manual care that I could not give her. She did not want to be in a nursing home. She wanted to be home. She wanted to be in her own home. The aging couple faces some grave challenges. It became a, a lot of work on my stepfather to take care of my mother um, as, she, as her illness progressed. And um, he wasn't in the greatest of health either. Okay. And things are about to get much, much worse. She was not very um, affectionate towards Mrs. Merman. Why didn't I say that? Why, why, how did I miss that? Facing escalating health problems, Florida couple Don and Peggy Merman are forced to admit they need help to survive. As the elderly couple struggles, Shelley Parker, a local woman, offers to lend a hand and moves into the small home in the autumn of 2005. She was just a friend that, one, she needed a place to be, and um, and they needed somebody to help. So it was a give, you know, give and take, win-win situation. Well, at the beginning, it was house cleaning, running chores, uh, driving them around. Uh, as uh, Donald got 
uh, sicker, and then as uh, Peggy got sicker, she uh, became really more of a formal caregiver. Shelly was a sweet lady. She truly was. She was an older lady. She was small in stature and size. As Don and Peggy's needs escalate, the situation is barely manageable when tragedy strikes. Don Merman dies suddenly after a stroke in March of 2007. It was, uh, it was devastating to my mother. She was hurt because he was her company, you know. How can I manage without him? My mother became more demanding. I, I, she became, um, I, I believe, uh, fearful in a lot of ways. In time, and with Dawn's absence, Peggy's physical problems become overwhelming for Shelley. Oh, Shelley, do you, do you think you could go and get me some of those crackers that I like so much? Oh, thank you. You're done. She was depressed. Um, in fact, she took medication for it. Um, she was, uh, she did suffer anxiety, and, and that, that put more stress on her, more stress on the household. Luckily, the community pitches in when they can, and Peggy has no shortage of visitors. Well, look, a young man. Miss Jackie lived across the street, and a lot of her girlfriends were friends with Mother. They would actually come get her, even when she lost her mobility. Shelly, Shelly, my guests have no more coffee. But not everyone is enjoying themselves. You have to make more, darling. I'm coming already, okay? I believe that my mother had gotten so used to being waited on by both Dawn and Shelly that she became accustomed to it. And when it was only Shelly, then it became overwhelming. And so it, they would argue. I would like my pills now. Well, where's the oxycodone, Peggy? How on earth would I know? You wouldn't be saving them for later now, would you? What are you implying? Well, you just get out. I'm tired. Just, you, just get out now. I don't want you here. No more. <gasps> Peggy Merman could sometimes be difficult with the people around her. She was sometimes combative. I spoke with my mother about it, and it was asking her to be more patient um, with somebody that was trying to help her. Peggy's care has become too much for Shelley to handle on her own. Um, her and I had talked about it. Shelley, this, it's too much on you now. She's becoming too much of a handful for you. So she offers up a solution, her friend, Tony. We gotta make this work. He could help do manual stuff with her at night, get her up and down. Um, although she wasn't extremely heavy, she was still a lot heavier than Shelly was. So he was there to help. Oh. I don't think that old woman wants us here. <laughs> don't take it personally. She just likes to complain about everything. Tony Smith moves in with his daughter Mary in tow. But the changes in the house make for even more attention. The nerve of these people, the unbelievable nerve. Let me see. Oh, what, what are you talking about? Especially when Peggy spots a problem with her finances. My mother called me and she said that there was money missing from her checking account. It's a smattering of small purchases. Things unlikely to be purchased by Peggy, a housebound woman. I looked and sure enough, there was money missing. It was uh, store transactions. It wasn't a cash, it was store transactions and places that she had not been. You know, it's that Tony and Shelly. I mean, it's obvious that I haven't been eating out downtown. It's not like I'm zipping around these days. Look, look. Mom, I believe you. And we thought that it was Shelly or her gentleman helping her towards the end. And maybe um, his daughter had taken and, and used the card. We didn't know. Look, she can't do the job anyway. Let's just fire. What's going on, ladies? I think we all know... This isn't going so well, and we think it's time now that you just leave. Peggy decides not to press charges. Mrs. Merman was very independent. I don't think she would have allowed or 
basically aired out what was going on in her personal finances. Even without criminal charges, there is bad blood on both sides. She had been terminated from her employment. She left under a cloud of suspicion. And a grudge can be a terrible burden. She had no love loss for Mrs. Merman or for Mrs. Merman's daughter, Janice Roberts. People can kill people out of revenge. Despite being fleeced by her personal caregiver and the death of her husband, Peggy Merman is suddenly reinvigorated. She has something new to look forward to. There was a um, family reunion that um, Mrs. Merman wanted to go to, and it was out of state. Peggy has been working hard to be in top form, to go to her native South Carolina and celebrate with her large family. Oh, good. Oh, it's people she never gets to see. I mean, our family is scattered to the four winds. She loved her family. She was a social butterfly with her family. Oh, my. Yes. And this butterfly is determined to spread her wings. Every single visit I had with her, she kept telling me, I want to walk, I want to walk, I want to walk. She was very determined. As the date approaches, there's a hitch. Janice can't take her. I could not go to family reunion. I was in the middle of altering medications. Very hard on me. I mean, they make you sleep 18 hours a day. Um, you feel like a walking zombie. But just when hope is lost, the answer to her problems materializes right before her eyes. I think that's very beneficial for you. Oh my goodness, there's Donald and Jan. Lifelong bachelor Donald Mallory is one of Peggy's dearest neighbors. He did enjoy life, and he always had pretty women that he, that he saw, but never got really serious that I know of. Until he unexpectedly ties the knot with Jana, a 40-year-old from Georgia. Is that Donald's new friend? Jana may not be polished, but she's kind and very friendly. When I first met Jenna, I liked Jenna. I met her at Mom's house. I think it would do Mama a world of good to get to the reunion, but I, I just don't know how she could manage it. You know what? I think me and Donald could help you out, right, babe? Absolutely. Really? Yeah. Really? Well, thank you. Oh, my goodness. Thank it's you. the answer to the family's prayers. So to have a woman and a man, to have his strength and... Uh, you know, her ability to do more personal stuff being a female, um, I really felt was lucky. It was a godsend. Uh, so pleased that you came, Carter. Um, I'm so pleased with everybody that came, really, because, oops, oh dear. Oh, let me help you with that. Oh, Jenna, honey, you are too good to me. I couldn't get used to this. Well, you should get used to this. I'm going to try. I really <laughs> am. Do you want one of your protein shakes? Oh, I'd love one. Because to be honest, this is really not that Oh, great. is it? I'm sorry about that. This lifted her spirits completely. Going on vacation to the family reunion was just like a shot in the arm of, of happy. And she was just like a whole new person. It was great. After the reunion, Peggy is thrilled when Don and Janice's help continues. Oh my, what are they doing to my beautiful house? When she's faced with retrofitting her home to accommodate her wheelchair, they generously offer to take her in. Oh honey, you can't live like that. It's hard enough for you to manage in your situation. No, you stay here as long as you want. Oh, Jenna, that is so very generous of you. Thank you. The renovation work should only take a few days. You know, it'll just be for the couple weeks, and it was great, wonderful, no problem. For Peggy, staying in Jana's house is the perfect solution. She seemed like she was the answer to our need at the moment, and, and it was a real need. But two months pass with no end to the renovations in sight. It wasn't like a team going in and going, oh, look, three days and we'll be in and out of here. It was kind of a, we'll get there when we can. We do a little bit in between because we're doing other jobs. So it, it, it dragged. It really did drag on. Luckily, Jana is happy to remain Peggy's caregiver. Even when Peggy's health starts to get worse. Her daughter Janice hasn't seen her in weeks. When she went to Donna Janice's house, I didn't get to go because there was, again, not my home, not her home. 
in February, she called me and wished me happy birthday. James? Hi, honey. Hi, honey. How are you? Honey, bunny. Uh, it's your birthday. My birthday's not in February. <laughs> I was like, yeah, I'm going towards the end of February, and I'm going, Mom, my birthday's past, honey. It was, you know, before. She goes, no, it's today, and I'm going, no. She, she sounded lethargic. Um, you could tell that it was, that she didn't have her full faculty. Oh, happy birthday. <laughs> she would take medication. What she took is extremely strong. So to know the type of medication she was on and to know that she was drugged was normal to a certain degree. I would just figure it was medication. You know, it's, I caught her at a bad time. I caught her right after, you know, it's, it's taking effect. <laughs> So it just seemed normal to me that um, she was drugged. <laughs> but what seems normal at first soon seems bizarre. It just kind of gave me a funny feeling in the pit of my stomach. I thought, that doesn't sound very right. I thought, oh my God, how could you go through that much money? After spending a few months in the care of neighbors, Florida grandmother Peggy Merman has passed away. Her daughter, Janice, drives to South Tampa to start making funeral arrangements with her mother's caregivers, Donald and Jana Mallory. I talked back and forth with Jana quite a few times, getting ready to go, and we had to settle everything at the house first. I think this is what you wanted. Sorry, I'm not sure. Peggy still liked to manage everything on her own. Yeah. Thanks. But what's happened to her jewelry? Her mother's precious ring is still on Janice's mind. She wouldn't have lost it. Yeah, well, that's that's true. Um, she didn't lose it. She, uh, your mother gave it to me. And she was afraid that, you know, you, you would get angry if you found out. So she told me to say that it was lost if you asked. Janice puts the ring aside for um, now. You know that pillow that she used to use? Where is it? I'd like to have it. I know it's silly and sentimental, but I, I want it. Oh, no, no, that was really disgusting. I threw it away. I took her Bible, her glasses, and I wanted that. Stupid things. I mean, nothing that was huge monetary value. And I was told to put a wrap on it. And that she threw it away. Okay, you know what? Um, why don't you go get me your car keys, okay? Yeah, uh, about that, she, um... Your mother gave me the car. No, she didn't give you the car. Just go get me the car keys, or I'm going to call the cops. I was being pushed around. I'm done. I'm the, nothing felt like it was in order in my world. I just felt so chaotic. So I just let the cop handle it. So? As if that weren't enough. Janice needs to attend to her mother's last wishes. Thank you so much. My mom already decided that she wanted cremation. So we were going to cremate her and divide her ashes, just like we had my stepfather's. I'm going, okay, well, I need to go to the banks. I need to get funds for a funeral. But when Janice tries to get money from Peggy's accounts... There's no money in my mom's account? She gets a shocking bit of news. But how can this be happening? It doesn't make any sense. This is... My heart hit the floor. I thought, oh my God, how could you go through that much money? You have not what? been anywhere to spend money. So how do you do that? Are you the bank manager then tells her that there had been some anomalies a few months before, but Peggy refused to do anything about it. There is no way that this is my mother. Could Shelly, Peggy's old caregiver, still have access to her mother's accounts? I am ranting. I'm raving. I mean... Uh, at this point, I was distraught. With one question after another weighing on her, Janice drives her mom's car home. When something in the back seat catches her eye. In the car, there is a massive amount of unopened mail. I mean, st a stack. It was all her bills. They were all overdue past due collection notices so yeah i start opening them you know because these are all unopened 
So I'm opening one bill right after another. I was freaking out. But Peggy was notoriously careful with money. She was um, very frugal, very, very frugal, and very cautious about money. Even the missing pillow starts to infuriate Janice. I was told she had thrown up on it. Or drooled on it is what she said. She had drooled on it and she had thrown away. And I said, drooled? My mother doesn't drool. Even medicated. <laughs> That's a sure sign of drugs. An overdose. But that really struck a hardcore for me. Armed with these suspicions, Janice heads straight to the police. My mom threw up, which she never does, okay? And she had this pillow when there was vomit all over and they throw it out, but my mother would have never thrown it out. It's gotta be pills, right? Look, she's about to be cremated tomorrow. Are you listening to me? I think we have to have an autopsy. What do you... Her claims fall on deaf ears. I was not sure that I was being heard. They, they think that I'm just some lunatic, <laughs> you know, because as somebody who just can't deal with it. With the funeral home about to cremate her mother's body, time is running out. Desperate, Janice calls the medical examiner. We had a, a phone call from the daughters of the deceased, raising concerns that she felt that her mother might have been poisoned. I believe that things are a mess. I really do. Look, there were two medications that she was on before she died. I just want to know if the levels were normal. Specifically, the daughter mentioned two narcotic prescription medications. One was called oxycodone and the other one was hydrocodone. And both of those drugs are of concern because they're highly abused and they can also easily cause an overdose. Hello? Mrs. Roberts? Yes? This is the medical examiner's office. We're going to pick up your mother at the funeral home right away. Thank you. I knew it. I was shocked. I was like, oh wow, somebody listened. Oh my God, how? Well, maybe I'm not as crazy as I thought I was. The medical examiner can take jurisdiction over any death case if there are suspicious circumstances. So if somebody was intentionally over-medicated, the only way that they're going to be able to determine that is by actually conducting an autopsy. The medical examiner also turns the case over to police detective Chuck Masucci. When I spoke to the examiner, he said that there was more medication in her system than she had actually been taking. And when I spoke to her on the phone, she seemed completely out of it. Finally, Janice is being heard. She was uh, very emotional, uh, torn between grief and anger. And also, all her jewelry was missing. My mom never takes her jewelry off. And her bank accounts had been emptied completely. There was zero money in her account, yet she's paid no bills in months. Look, this is her credit card bill. I have her, her, her gas bill. I have her light bill. Nothing's been paid. I, I know this might sound crazy, but... No. It doesn't sound crazy at all. Thanks. As Masucci reviews all of Janice's information, bank statements, credit card receipts, and prescriptions, the autopsy results come in. They're inconclusive, but raise some red flags. There's no obviously obvious signs of trauma occurring in Mrs. Merman. <laughs> but the medical examiner does find shockingly high levels of drugs in Peggy's system. Some of them in excess of 10 times the normal concentration you would expect to see in someone's system. The high levels of drugs in Peggy Merman's system made them believe that the death was unnatural. To me, it was going to be one of three things. You know, Peggy was hoarding drugs and committed suicide, or that there had just been a, a lapse in care, or that she was murdered. Police in Tampa, Florida are becoming convinced that Peggy Merman did not die from natural causes. They speak to everyone who's had close dealings with Peggy in the last few months, but they keep one detail to themselves. I did not confirm to them that an autopsy had been done and that we did have some suggestion, some science as to we were looking at a homicide, and I held that back. I actually think that that was a critical law, invest, law enforcement strategy. One of the people the police question is her dismissed caregiver, Shelley Parker. Shelly wasn't forthright during her interview. She had no love loss for Mrs. Merman or for Mrs. Merman's daughter, Janice Roberts. She had been terminated from her employment. She left under a cloud of suspicion. Shelly was really, um, really trying to attempt to vindicate herself during my interview with her. Shelly suggests that Peggy hoarded her pills, which raises the specter of suicide. 
There were no prescription bottles that were found at the scene. There was no suicide note. From what Detective Masucci can tell, suicide is unlikely. She wasn't very mobile. She couldn't get up by herself. She doesn't really have the access to the medications. Those are kept in a separate room. And the sheer amount of drugs in her body makes an accidental overdose unlikely. The fluoxetine was uh, a full gram in her body, which is 100 times, which is 100 or more pills. That doesn't happen accidentally. With pills being the clear cause of death, and both suicide and accidental overdose ruled out, only one option remains. We're looking at everything around this death. There was no autopsy since uh, she was cremated right away at the family's request. And police soon learn only one person had access to the deadly mix of medications. Well, I will do anything I can to help. So, um, let me ask you about Mrs. Merman's primary care. Who was the primary caregiver? How did that work? Well, I pretty much waited on her hand and foot. I loved her. I even used a monitor to hear if she was okay. A baby monitor. By, by holding all that information, we gave her enough rope to hang herself. And that's what she did. I think knowing that fact, that there would never be any evidence that could prove that Mrs. Merman was over-medicated, she felt confident in portraying herself as this loving, trustworthy caregiver. I gave her her meds, fed her, nobody else. She eliminated everybody else as potential, uh, being potentially involved in the ingestion of these drugs. Because she was still talking about I took care of the medication. Very good. I did this, I did that. I did everything. Everybody else is going, no, 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 not me, not me. Donald was in the other room. He's in there going, no, I never did anything. I did not uh, give Peggy medicine. She hung herself by blowing her own horn. My view of Jana is that she's a manipulative person who thinks she's smarter than other people. She's the type of person that continued to talk to me because she was going to convince me how sweet she was. When police dig a little deeper, they learn Jana is far from the sweet girl who Donald Mallory fell in love with. A review of Jana's criminal background shows prior arrests for prostitution and drugs and theft. She has several aliases. Wow, a string of aliases. I was shocked. I was shocked. I mean, here I'm thinking that she's this little sweet girl next door, American Pie. And I find out that all this is going on, and I'm going, holy cow. And Peggy's ring finally turns up. We heard from Tampa police that the jewelry was found in a local pawn shop. Brought there by Jenna herself. It was, oh my God, all I could think of was, I took it off of her body. How could you do that? The prosecutor and police develop a theory about how Peggy was poisoned. The only way that would make any sense is if these pills were being crushed or the capsules were being emptied into a nutritional shake or into her food to get them into her system. You would have to really dissolve it and put it with something that's a little bit sugary and has better taste. convulsions, uh, vomiting, it off at any time by calling EMS. And they didn't.
the toxicology report, the bank statements, the ring theft, and her self-incriminating interviews, the prosecution puts Jana on trial for the murder of Peggy Merman. She still tried to present herself in the light of that she was a good and caring caregiver, that she did not do anything um, that caused the victim's death. The jury doesn't buy it. On April 10th, 2013, Jana Mallory is sentenced to 30 years in prison for murder in the second degree. Jana's husband, Don, is investigated but faces no charges, but he certainly pays a price. And while the case is closed, it's not over for Janice. You can grieve all you want, but it doesn't mean it's going to stop hurting. When they found her guilty, I didn't cheer. All I could do was cry, both for my mother and I cried for Jana. You know, I've often thought that I wanted to know why and understand it, but what kind of a person does it take to understand that thinking, that cruelty? But I'll never understand. I don't ever want to understand.